Welcome to the Startup Grind. So it's customary that when we start off the Startup Grind, we usually get it all pumped up and everybody claps and does weird stuff and everybody has cupcakes in their hands. So I'm going to bear you the pain um, of doing all that stuff. But again, I just want to thank everybody that is sitting in these seats for coming to Startup Grind. This is a really, really important piece of our community, I believe. Because again, Startup Grind will bridge the story between Tallahassee and the rest of the entrepreneurial community. Again, there's over 100 chapters in um, Startup Grind all over the world, from Africa to uh, Boston to out in the valley. There's just chapters everywhere. If you haven't been on the Startup Grind website, make sure you get on there. And just tap on some of the other chapters and see what they're doing. Um, I do have an open invitation if you want to get involved um, in a more granular way with Startup Grind, as far as like look at some of the conversations that's going on and get some of those ideas. Um, I'm open to that. Let's just meet up and have some coffee and let's dig in and see what's going on all over the world. Um, I think that's important. So without further ado, what I'm about to do is go ahead and get into this situation we got right here. Um, this start of grind to me is really, really special because this to me I think is really the lifeblood of what entrepreneurship is really all about. To have a vision, an idea, and to actually get out there and do it. So I'm about to shut up and let these two wonderful people introduce themselves to the startup grind. Sure. I'm Jean Bates, and I am a co-owner of Lucy and Leo's Cupcakery. I am Paula Lucas, and I'm the other one of those. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. And we are in a cupcakery, and the cupcakes are phenomenal. And I had an opportunity to actually sit down with these two phenomenal women who I believe are very, very courageous and, and powerful for the sense that they had an idea and a vision in a place like Tallahassee where it's been historically kind of difficult to launch really, really innovative, cool stuff, and they did it. But they did it in a really interesting way. So I'm, as I'm going through the interview, I want you to kind of hear what makes them so unique. And it's really, really enchanting to me, and I think that you're going to get a big appreciation of how they did and why they did what they did. So the very first thing that I do want to start off and start talking about is this idea of craftsmanship. Because I see it happening all over the country. We have a lot of tech startups, which we adore. We love the tech startups because they break molds and, and do really, really cool stuff. But I really, really love this idea of getting back to craftsmanship. So if you guys could just talk to me a little bit about craftsmanship and why you do what you do, I think we'd, we'd get a lot from that. Sure. The number one thing that we're the most proud of is what you ate tonight is handmade every single day with our hands. We don't use any mixes, it's fresh, it's baked fresh. Uh, we want it to be a feeling of you are at your grandma's house and you get to eat her favorite baked good. And that we really, really believe that's, that we're a standout in that, in the cupcake world because we've traveled and we've had a, we've, we do our research where we go and we stand strong that, that we still own that very special handmade thing where we're not going to let it, if it gets bigger than us, you know, start going down that road. That's what our truth is, that it is handmade every single day. Wow, that's pretty powerful. And you just said something that you said that if it gets too big, that you're going to scale that thing back and stay to your truth. So talk, talk to me a little Absolutely. bit about that. Uh, one of the things that we definitely noticed is that, that when, when small bakeries or cupcakeries uh, do start to expand, the only way to keep up what we found is that they have to bring in a mix so that it can be formulated and it can always be done the same exact way repetitively and done at mass quantity. Our goal was never to do mass quantity. Our goal is to what we produce here is what we can handle and what the, creates the demand and the supply and that's how it works. If we were to expand it, we would find someone else that could bake it in that location and provide it fresh, made from scratch, independently um, uh, product so that you, you don't diffuse your product or else I wouldn't be proud of it anymore. Absolutely, absolutely. That is so, so important. And I think, so how many locations do you guys have right now? We currently have two. Two locations. And we also have a mobile unit. We have a food truck as well. Oh, wow. So you guys have been able to grow to the, to the extent where you do have two and that authenticity is within all those, those 
those Absolutely. locations. Absolutely. Wow, that is so powerful. And you also talked a little bit about um, the local touch in the field and the people and how the people actually wrap themselves. And this to me, I think, is part of that Tallahassee story that this community, if, you, if you're doing something really, really cool, you can get some big hugs. Yeah. You guys got big hugs. Big Talk hugs. about those big <laughs> hugs. One of my favorite things is, uh, well, there's a lot to do with my car, but one of the, one of the cool things is that, that when we drive a car with the Lucy and Leo's logo down the street, going to the grocery store, anywhere, we get treated kind of like royalty. People let us get out in front of them, people wave at us, people honk at us. <laughs> Yes, the other day, this little girl like looked at the, we couldn't hear her, the windows were up. She just looked at the symbol on the car and was like, <gasps> and had this like exhilaration just from our logo. I don't even have a cupcake in the car. Like I got, I'm just going to the grocery store. But Talk they about just brand like, recognition. Yeah. This kid wanted to like come up and hug the car. And a couple years ago, my car actually got stolen out of my driveway. Um, the Lucy, the Lucy, the Lucy Leo. and Leo's vehicle. <laughs> so logo. Stole the, Someone the stole logo. it. Now, don't leave your key in the car. With but logos. With logos. They took the car out of my driveway, used it in a, in a armed robbery, but it was returned to us because of the logos that were on the side of the car. And we had this frenzy going for two days where the community's like, I think I see it. I think it's here. And helping out, like, it turned right. into this like game to get my car back, and then when we actually did get it back, we had to tell everybody, I have it now, so don't tell it's the cops me. that I'm driving my car back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that, like, man, people were so excited, and I still get people, did you get your car back? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got my car three years ago. But wow. that whole frenzy and their, like, enthusiasm for making sure that we survived, and they were there for us, and people... You know, let us loan us cars. Uh, companies out there, the Proctor Group loves us, so they gave us a car right <laughs> off the lot to drive till I got my car back. Oh, that is phenomenal! And I'm going to go ahead and give a clap. Look, everybody clapping up for their logo. <laughs> their logo. You know, as a designer, as a designer, I had the you know the privilege of being able to walk around you know the facilities, and hopefully we can catch some of that and show it in the videos. That your logo, your brand, feels so authentic and so human. Yeah. It's just something about it. So I was sitting down talking to you about, you know, what really built the brand. There's something that you told me about that building process that just absolutely killed me. I loved it. If you could share a little bit about really who did build this brand, Lucy and Leos. Um, we, we sat down with an idea with friends and family at a table um, when the idea came to us. And we had that support. Um, you know, you, you set one tiny idea out and you know, as entrepreneurs, you guys know, like people, it's like fire and just everybody has, even if it's not, you know, something where you're like, ooh, maybe that doesn't work for us, but down the road, you revisit those things and, and that fire just spread amongst our family and our friends and everybody wanted us to do this. And we started off really small at a card table um, over in the railroad square area here and everyone, you know, our first time out, when are you gonna have a storefront? And we're like, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> and then it came much quicker because we did have the, the su support of our families and friends like saying, I've got this much money I would like to oh, give wow. to you guys. Um, it, this is not a loan, this is for you guys to just to get this off the ground because you have something really fantastic and authentic here and we really, really want to be behind you and support you and make this happen. Wow, there's something special about that friends and family capital. Yeah. That, that kind of capital yeah. raise, you know, where people believe in you. That's and they know powerful. you're not going to hang out for a while because you're going to be real busy for the next five to ten years of your life. Yeah. And they're right. willing to give you up And for now that. they miss us. Yeah, wait a minute. Right, but right. also there's another non-human aspect of it too that Lucy and Leo are our dogs. Well, our dog and the next door neighbor's dog that was one of the first people to invest. <laughs> and we were like trying so hard to come up with the right name. And, and what we realized in knowing that this was a good idea was that there were so many of these names already taken. Okay. So like anything to do with flour, sugar, sprinkles, sift, <laughs> whisk, spoon, bowl, mixer, all those names were taken. Sugar daddy, mama, grandma, all of them. I was like, I would sugar be daddy. typing there all day long, oh, like geez. every single name that I am brainstorming to come up with is taken. So all right. Everybody's doing this in the world, but they're not doing it in Tallahassee yet. And then the combo of bringing the dogs on board to be sort of our, kind of our mascot in yeah, a way, absolutely. Um, gave us uh, an outlet for philanthropy. So we do a lot of things with uh, oh, wow. the Animal Shelter Foundation that got us a connection very quickly. And people just love the fact that we named them after dogs. Like okay. people dig that. That gives them another level to this 
uh, this branding that when they know that, it's just another thing that they're like, that's even cooler. And wow. we really wanted to brand ourselves kind of not, we are not frilly, girly girls. What? <laughs> we didn't. Just a what? <laughs> take what you will. I mean, here we are. <laughs> take what you feel. <laughs> and we didn't want it to be <laughs> dripping with polka dots and pink. That wasn't our style. So yeah. um, when we brainstormed about the logo, you know, we said we want something that is slightly feminine yet slightly masculine as well. So um, we have a, a friend that was a brilliant designer that came up with the logo for us almost immediately with just those words coming out of our mouths and you know we've tweaked it just to crisp it up and modernize it a little bit but it's it is still where it, where where we started with it wow that is really really cool and talk to me a little bit about what you guys are doing with the you said with the animal shelter or mm -hmm. talk to me a little bit about that because one thing that that I've talked about you know as I do you know talks and, and consulting all over the country is that and no shame on the guys in the room. I'm going to go ahead and prelude it with that. <laughs> Females, women entrepreneurs, tend to have this level of empathy. Mm -hmm. It's like their heart tends to lead towards things that's really, really, really impact, impactful above and beyond the business, the business thing. So I want to hear from you, from your heart, what made you actually go down that route? What made you actually say, you know what, we're going to do something bigger and we're going to do this? Uh, just finding the tie in the community is huge for us. It's it's huge for, you know, who we provide the product to, and but it really states who we are. And um, we've been in this community for a very long time, both of us since 1991 here in Tallahassee. Um, so you know, more than half our lives through the math. Um, we we are Tallahassians, and we wanted to give back to it and just wow. um, you know keep it a relevant thing that we're always thinking of. We're always um, trying to support and. Um, make it something that everybody's as proud to jump on board with us. You know, we, she said about the dogs, you know, as soon as people say, first of all, they walk in, are you Lucy? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'm Paula. Get that lazy dog <laughs> off the couch and do something. You don't want right. Lucy and Leo making your cupcakes, I <laughs> you promise you. But, um, you know, and then you say, no, they're dogs. And then, and it, and it transforms the experience right there in front of you mm -hmm. if they're a pet lover or if you know they've had any experience in you know working with animals or something there's a there's a like you said an empathy right off the bat you have a that connection right there yeah. um, and then using that love and going down you know where we do you know birthday parties we have um, the Animal Shelter Foundation come out and bring dogs and do adoptathons when we do it and oh, wow. you know just so it keeps on rolling with that there you go. That's good stuff. Good stuff. Um, family and friends came in. We talked about how they helped with the funding. And you also talked about something that I looked at kind of, and when you, when you said it to me, it's kind of like this incubation model mm -hmm. that was like rigorous and awesome. You said that they just wouldn't let you quit. <laughs> no. It was this support system that wrapped themselves around you and your idea that really, really helped push you forward and wouldn't let you quit. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? I think that... Uh, one thing I definitely feel is that the community wouldn't even let us fail. It's like a, the idea of a bailout. They need us as much as we need them mm -hmm. for this, this connectivity. Like we are a part of what their Tallahassee experience is all about. Right. And sometimes when I forget it and I get frustrated and you know go through the grind, if you will, mm -hmm. um, you get reminded of it. Like just two weeks ago uh, was the graduation from FSU and this happened to be the mark of the kids that had come in as freshmen when we very first started because we're now in our fifth year mm -hmm. so th we've seen these kids from freshman to graduation now wow. and, a, and a guy came in on Saturday morning our busiest day almost of the year other than Valentine's Day mm -hmm. and and looked up at me and he's like I just want to thank you for being a part of my child's experience here and my experience here. Because when we came to town, we always sought you out and we always came here wow. to be a part of this community. And this is what made it interesting and fun and feel good to be here. And that's exactly, talk about empathy and being the girl and the chick. That, that's, that gives me a lot of goods that are more than money can ever buy. Absolutely, absolutely. Chop that up, chop that up. That's awesome stuff. You know, and it's, and we talk about this a lot, you know, you know, it's in, in our in our circles of the world of startup, right? We talk about this duty that we all kind of feel 
for Tallahassee. We really want to build this thing and do something <laughs> awesome and magical. So to sit with you two and to understand that that is your fiber, that is at your core, it inspires me. And I think we should all clap that up one more time. <laughs> one more time. I because that's, about it. that's so huge. It's so huge. And it's so important and it's so meaningful. So I just want to appreciate you. I want to say thank you for You're sticking welcome. it out and, thank and you. getting busy <laughs> and getting in the game. Um, you talked about gratification is in the connection. You also talked about social media. If we lean towards on the tech side of the house, well, we can get techie on them too. We're going to talk a little bit about tech. We're going to talk about social media because that's another part of, of your DNA. That's part of your fiber that, that makes you guys special. Talk a little bit about how you view social media and how you use it to win. Uh, we're really lucky we have a tangible product that you can put your eyes and your hands on every day. And... Um, you know, if you're going through Facebook and somebody puts up a cool picture, you're most likely to, to like it more instead of just reading a bunch of words on a page. Um, we, so we have, you know, our Instagram and our Facebook are our, our biggest platforms as far as our social media because we can tantalize from, from a, a, hit, a, hit, a hit of a send button and get 63 likes in three minutes. And you're like, yes, yes. And then they walk in the door because they're driving, you know, down the street on Facebook and they're like, Arr! you know, and they come right in. <laughs> um, and it's, you know, that, that conversation that, that happens with it um, just, just through um, everybody, you know, sending it to somebody else, like, your favorite flavor is here today. You have to wow. come in. And then they'll be like, yeah, my friend just sent me this on Facebook. You have my favorite flavor today. So it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we go viral. Absolutely. Day, I think. So, um, how many people in this room, not to cut you out, how many people in this room have actually been caught in the cupcake trap? That's what I'm calling it, the <laughs> cupcake trap. So, so you guys have actually had the cupcake trap experience happen to you. That's phenomenal. That's cool stuff. Yeah, we it's just, uh, we broke 10,000 last week of fans on Facebook. High five that. That's business. That's business right, business there. right there. Wow. And uh, we were just on the cusp of, like, right, right in what would, I would think Tallahassee was the start of mm -hmm. this social media. Because when we first looked at it, I, I hadn't actually seen Facebook before. And everybody's like, well, you got to make a little business page. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> I'll make a little business page. And I don't do anything for myself on there. But then we got these 100 fans, and I was like, I just got 100 fans. What? 100 people like me? What? Right, now right. we got 10,000 people that like us. <laughs> 10,000. Yeah. And it, it's neat because it's not just local. You know, we have people all over the country that still, uh, we gained a lot of it from being on TV with Cupcake Wars. And wow. then it, you know, it continued with that. There's, you know, people in North Dakota are writing us like, oh, I wish I, you could bring one to North Dakota today. Me too. <laughs> right, right. And did you see how she just threw that out there? When we were on Cupcake Wars. <laughs> Talk to us about Cupcake Wars. What was going on? You know, when we was on Cupcake Wars, just ran over it. It's kind of what it feels like. Yeah. Is that because that's what it was like? Because that's what it felt like. So um, talk to us. In 2011, we were on Cupcake Wars. Um, we came in second place. Woo -woo. Bringing home the number two yeah. to Tallahassee. That's what I'm talking about, Cupcakes. It, it, was a, it was a good time. It was a hard time, but um, well worth it. And, you know, if you want some love, go on TV and, no and, and be, be a local hero. We had, Don't be you know, a jerk. No, I, don't be a jerk I, on TV. <laughs> no, don't be a jerk. Don't we be were, a Kardashian. We were not You'll jerks. Um, <laughs> you know, I keep using the word community, but the community that rallied around that um, was... I mean, we, we were heroes, and we, we used flour and sugar and butter. Like, wow, we're not saving the world, but we're putting smiles on people's faces, and we're, and we're, we're, we're at your kid's first birthday party and their college graduation and your wedding and your first baby, and, um, you know, that flour, sugar, and butter is, is, a, is a mold that is what, why we, we show up here every day. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's really, really cool. Let's go back a little bit further. I want to go way back, way back. Let's go back to, because let's talk a little bit about the DNA of an entrepreneur, right? The, the DNA of an entrepreneur. Would you say that you, you became entrepreneurs or was something that was always in your gut? Always in my gut. Always in your gut? Always in my, I don't even like baking. She ain't saying that. What's she <laughs> saying? She was like, I'm glad it was in your <laughs> in retail forever so it, it has always been the, the, in the vision absolutely okay but talk to me a little bit about it because the thing about entrepreneurs what we find to be a little bit different 
Um, I was just reading a big article. This was a few months ago. I think it was in Inc. Magazine. They were talking about the lonely lifestyle of an entrepreneur because there's things that we do and that we go through that the rest of the world, they never have to think about, mm -hmm. right? There's, there's different moves that we've got to make. Mm -hmm. And if it's in your gut, if it's something that you just do, then that, that brings on something special. And I just want to hear from you. Being an entrepreneur, how long did you know you were an entrepreneur and what, what has that journey been like for you? I think every time I had a job at a corporation or uh, even a small business and kind of gone up the ranks a little bit, I was always like rookie of the year and then get disenfranchised or just disen disengaged with it or disappointment. Um, and, and kind of always thought I could do it a little bit better than that or I, I just I want to do it on my own and really put it all on the line and uh -huh. see because you're it's kind of like being a parent I've always I was adopting other children for a while and then when you have your own it's a whole nother ball game right. but you get you got the guts and the glory so you put it all on the line you get the ability to have that sense of 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 just pride mm -hmm. you don't get to have that level until you sink yourself completely in it so the wow. the benefit comes from your investment and so I always knew that I had to go all in, and we went all in. We lucked out. Because <laughs> I gamble a lot, too. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And so for you, what's it like for you? What is um, it? It's kind of the same, the same route. I, I worked in corporation, and you, know, you, you would have your own ideas, and you would, you would say over and over again, they don't know because they're not here. Well. There's no they, so <laughs> you know, put, putting your neck out every day and um, you know going through the struggles and jumping the hurdles and learning whatever you can from it and like being being glad when you been glad <laughs> when you lock the door every day like whoo we made it through another day, um, but but we did it in our way and and that's really important to us. Wow, that's like the soul of entrepreneurship. And I'm sure there's, how many entrepreneurs do we have in the room? Raise your hand. Pretty much everybody's kind of like a, on the, on the entrepreneurial slant. Um, because some people say that you can learn to be an entrepreneur. Some people say you're born entrepreneur. Um, I think that it kind of goes both ways. There's a fresh blend um, in the two. And so it's really, really refreshing to hear your story about entrepreneurship and, and what that means to you and where it's at inside of you. Something that you guys did we were talking about, you know, how you had to break through the noise. Because we're here in Tallahassee, and part of Startup Grind for me is really telling the Tallahassee story. And you guys really, really broke through the noise. You broke through the idea of here you are in Tallahassee, how you gonna make it, how you gonna win, and you did that. Yeah. What were some of the things that you guys did to actually break through the noise to get beyond the hearsay and go to the level where you are right now? I think there was a level of of ignorance with the capacity of how much you could actually sell cupcakes. So people weren't necessarily aware of <laughs> what the market was. And that's such a, that's a term, it's a, it's a unquantifiable term to call the market, right? Because that could be anybody's choice to buy it or not buy it, dessert or not dessert. But when we saw it was, it was huge. The market was huge. So that was the first thing that we were able to say, na 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 boo boo, you know. Obviously, <laughs> there is a market where you can just sell cupcakes. Because if you do one thing and you do it really, really well, wow. you will be, you will be, you That's a huge yeah, handsomely paid off for that. Um, I also think that uh, the, the noise won't ever stop. Okay. When you said the break through the noise, I still hear the noise. The noise, <laughs> it's still the, back the noise there. Is not right. going the, the, the noise is, is yeah. it may become a lower drum at some point, right. but the noise now is how do you, how do you sustain this? How do you, how, how can you keep it up for another five, ten years? What is your next step? Like the noise is always there and you're constantly finding ways to reinvent yourself. You know, we were the cool wow. new kid for a while. For, for having cupcakes. Then we were the cool new kid for being on TV. Now we have to, you know, figure out what the next new thing is to be the cool new kid. Maybe you gave me the idea earlier today, which I'm not going to share with everybody right <laughs> Listen, now. Here we go. Here yeah. we go. I'll yeah. help you ideate yeah. that. We might have just changed the whole game plan about an hour wait, 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 ago. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> they just switch I'm going to get my paintbrush out tonight, and it's going to be all different. 
You're coming to help because it was your idea. We'll hook it up. We'll hook right. it up. I will give it to you because I want to see you just keep going up and up and up. And, and a it, lot of people, like as she said, you know, how you guys do cupcakes. People say that all the time. How do you just, you just do cupcakes? Well, we do it really, really well. Yes, <laughs> yes, we are proud of that and the way yeah. that we do it. Um, but like she said, the rein reinventing ourselves and not resting on our laurels and pushing pushing ourselves. Um, cupcakes are a trend. They were they they were a food trend that came came big on the scene years ago. Well, how do we sustain that? We just you know creativity. We we involve our staff in it. Okay. They help make a lot of decisions on what we put forth every single day. Awesome. Um, we have a lot of very creative people on our team that we've had for years that have yeah. st st stuck with us because um, they help us reinvent ourselves. They help us yeah. um, take it to the next level. You just opened up a whole new can of worms for me. You know that, right? <laughs> I'm like a big culture freak. How many people do you guys have on your team? What would your team consist of? How many people do you have? We have seven right now. Seven, okay. Yeah. And you've, you've, you've managed to create this culture of creativity. How did you do that? Where people actually bring forth their ideas and you get busy on them. We, we, we found their strengths mostly. Wow. Um, you know, we have one girl that we make cake balls as well. I said just cupcakes, but we do cake balls as well. You know, she's master, of it, it, they're beautiful. They're the most wow. beautiful things you've seen. And, you know, we have another guy that just does our fondant work. And so finding, tapping into what their strengths and what they really like to do. And now they're like, look what I did, look what I did. I, <laughs> I did it even better than the last time. Or, you know, they're, they're so proud, which invests them in what they do for us every single day. Yeah, absolutely. Get them to invest. That's cool. So what is your, what is your take on the, this, this culture of creativity? How do you think it got there? That's her perspective. Do you have the same perspective or do you have a different view? Well, I definitely think that letting them have their own space to, to be creative. We, you know, baking in itself, you can't mess with it too much. It's a formula. But you can have a lot to do with the flavor combinations and what you do with frosting and decor and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so even from the very beginning, most of our staff quickly moves up to being able to make and frost cupcakes because that's kind of like the finishing deal mm -hmm. and that's the the end product and the end game right. so they can feel like even though i didn't bake the product i still frosted it and finished it and now i stand behind it and i think that's the culture where they're selling a piece of what they made wow. every single day so they're a mini entrepreneur in themselves because they'll they'll like she's saying with with anna and the cake balls she took that and ran with it and got very enthusiastic about it. And we sell the hell out of some cake balls because she <laughs> believes in it and is yeah. very proud of it. And so if someone makes their flavor of the day or they get really happy about their frosting that they made, yeah. they'll sell it, sell it better than they would if I just made it and handed it to them and said, go sell this. You know, exactly. they don't have that investment in it. I couldn't be in this environment. I'd be like, you see that? That's my chocolate right there. I <laughs> yeah. did it. Oh, we do yeah. that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. So there's a spirit of entrepreneurship as well. And that's another, yeah, exactly. That's another thing that I just picked up from you guys. Mm -hmm. So you're just full of all kind of magic. So there's <laughs> entrepreneurship that's going on inside the business where everybody feels like they have a stake in the game. Yeah. Some ownership, which then in turn is going to breed more creativity. Yep. That's genius. You guys are like genius on automatic. Put that on tape. Genius on automatic. That's them. <laughs> yeah, we got that. Okay. Perseverance is another thing that you guys have a lot of. You guys have persevered. You have actually gone through and gone through some evolutionary cycles. And you said, you talked about reinvention, reinventing yourself, which I think is really, really important. When you reinvent yourself, is there a sense of fear to reinvent? Because I deal with people all the time. I'm like, you need to reinvent. They're like, oh, no. Because they don't want to, they don't want to, you know, shift gears or pivot to do something different. But you guys just kind of like, yeah, reinvent yourself. It's like normal to you. Talk about reinvention and, and how do you get over the hurdles of fear of reinvention? Or did the fear ever even exist? Oh, fear is here every day. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. All right, yeah. <laughs> you said you it know, is y pressing y upon you all right now. <laughs> um, a f a f absolutely, F fear is involved, um, but by pushing yourselves to that limit, that, that takes you to places of, of uncomfortability, um, and you, 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 but we gain that power. I'm going to go back to our staff again. Like they're so behind us wow. in what the next thing that they, you know, we might have some crazy hairbrand idea, but they're so behind us, and they're like. We can do this. We can do this. Let's go. We're so excited. Um, so, you know, they don't know how afraid we are sometimes. <laughs> wow. But when they see the sunshine on the other side of it, 
we, we get to celebrate that as a team and, you know, and move on to the next thing. Oh, wow. So you guys got agents running around. You're going to transform today. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, we really hit on a lot of different, are, is there something that if, if you had the opportunity to tell the world one thing, just one thing, and it'd be that golden nugget that somebody could walk away with that would absolutely flip their mind upside down and give them to go do something as courageous as, you, that you, as you've done, what would that one thing be? And I want one thing from you and one thing from you. Yep, you're on the spot. Give it to me. That one golden nugget that you could give somebody. Um, I, I'm kind of thinking about where this conversation would go today, and I came up with one word, and it's gumption. gumption. You gotta have gumption. You gotta have that that fire and that and that fear in you that plays a, a huge part in that gumption to move yourself to that next level yeah. and you know do it bigger and better than the next guy that's down the street and um, you know, knock the socks off everybody as often as you can and, wow. and not be complacent, but just keep, keep that gumption flowing. Wow, that's powerful, that's powerful. I might have stolen this from something I read or maybe I just dreamed it up, but. Um, <laughs> don't record this part. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't think Steve Jobs said it, so I don't <laughs> Look, think that would be a baby, problem. Stop, stop. <laughs> I'm um, going to but it kind of transformed my idea and it, and it and I my word is impatience um, it seems odd but if I had patience and I could always settle and and wow. be all right with it all it wouldn't keep moving I got you. so the complacency is in the impatience to to get it done today to get it done right to, to move on to the next step and 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 people want to be able to take that deep breath but I'm not sure that your business is the place to do that. Mm -hmm. You find other ways to take a deep breath and that this is a locomotive that just keeps on going. Wow, that is powerful. Did everybody grab those nuggets? I need some, nuggets. yeah, you grab those nuggets. You need, <laughs> clap that up, clap that up. I want a shirt that says, Gumption, no patience, Gumption, no patience. That's right, that is so powerful. And, and that to me, just in the short time that I've had to spend with you guys and really, really just kind of dig into your DNA, you are truly something magical for the city of Tallahassee. Above and beyond that, I think you guys are like, I wish I could like, franchise the crap out of you. We just have to make a bunch of really cool, creative <laughs> cultures. Seriously. Bobbleheads are coming tomorrow. You guys, exactly, because you guys are doing something really, really awesome, and the world needs to see it. And I hope that Startup Grind becomes a platform where the world really sees magic, because I think it's important that they do see magic. So if we could all give it a clap up, and we're gonna go into like a question answer session next. So I'm gonna unleash them on you. Are you ready for this? Go for it. Nice they look out. like a wild bunch. They now. look like I'm a, a wild I'm a, bunch. <laughs> I'm gonna let them ask questions and you guys just have at it. All right. All right. Fire Do we away. Have any there we go. Okay, so let me let me repeat that because I want to make sure that everybody here. Okay. If they were to bring their three fabulous dogs <laughs> to Lucy and Leo's to have a puppy play date. Yes. I wouldn't bring my puppy because he's horrible. <laughs> you would eat everything. <laughs> if they bought him here, would you cater to that? Would you cater to that, that, that situation? We do. We have a specialty cupcake called a pup cake. What? Yes, and it is. Good yes, that's a great question. Um, it is made of whole wheat flour and peanut butter and carrots, which are all very oh. dog friendly. Um, they are edible for humans as well. We've tasted them to make sure that they're satisfactory for, for the dogs. Um, but yeah, we, we do them a lot, and we've had special a lot of special requests for um, dog going away parties, like make special ones and birthdays wow. and things like that. So absolutely. Yeah, because my dog's terrible. Do we do what? Yeah. Take, take out. out. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay. And we have plenty of patio outside. space here. Bring them on up. Yeah, our guys got to sit outside. They, <laughs> they cannot come. That is an awesome question. That yeah. was huge. That was huge. What are the questions? Hit, hit me up. Um, I'm going to take a moment first to gush a little. Because in 2009, when you all opened, I, just, I think it, um, it really speaks to the empathy motivation. Mm -hmm. You were the only ones in town to do sugar-free and gluten-free cupcakes. What? And yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Because thank you're you. more inclusive than any other bakery in town. So I just wanted to thank you for that. You're welcome. you're welcome. Nobody else is doing custom order, gluten-free mini cupcakes. Clap that up. Yeah. <laughs>
Clap that up. That's glory. <laughs> that, that was pretty badass. Thanks. <laughs> what I would really like to hear is if you could please tell, tell, tell me and us about the first 98. You open the doors. Ooh. And food service, I used to own a bagel shop in Baltimore, so I know it's hard to get some jack <laughs> for the door. But like in Tallahassee up in Midtown, it's a small location, there's like one and a half parking spaces. <laughs> and we and take them most of the time. <laughs> yeah, this we know. <laughs> what did the first nine days look like from, from product to sales to cash to, you know, routine in the store? Like, how much sleep you got? How much you yelled at each other? Maybe yeah. He wants 90 days of war stories. You hear that? Yeah. 90 days There's of war stories. Like, yeah. yeah, absolutely. No, those are pretty awesome They're days. Because you win yeah. war. Um, opening night, line out the door, mothers, cousins, aunts, washing dishes, um, sweating, high-fiving, we're doing the right thing. Um, we, we actually didn't have we, our permit yet. <laughs> So we donated the cupcakes to everybody and put a tip jar out there and made... <laughs> Working for tips. Right, pretty much. But it was a lot of family and friends, so right. we went with the, you know, kind of honor system that night, and that was a pretty record-breaking evening. <laughs> sort of like your wedding dance, if you will, but we were, we were bound and determined to open that night because everybody was in town, and, and thanks, thanks for not having our permit that day, maybe. <laughs> and... Um, we're not trained bakers. We did not go to school for this. So the growth of our product from opening those doors in those first 90 days, um, we see pictures, like pictures that were in the newspaper from our opening and things. Same, same flavor as we do today. We're like, wow, we've really gotten better at this. <laughs> <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> Thank goodness. The evolution has been pretty cool. Um, because, you know, we honestly, we just wing it a lot of the time. Um, we, we, <laughs> we know we, that, that's a secret, that's cool. yes. <laughs> we do. We, we, we think of good. Um, um, flavors and and what we like and what everybody tells us they like and we throw it together um, but the growth in our product is is huge in um, learning how to, to do it the right way because like I said nobody went to school for this in, in this realm in, in here so we figured that out just one more thing um, uh, my, I called my dad every day. My dad was out in um, Texas, and you know, so we had to have that check-in. Like, how's it going? How's it going? And I'm like, well, we've worked 17 hours today. Um, people are still knocking on the door way after we've closed it. Um, we made X amount of money, and he's like, okay, I can't wait to talk to you tomorrow. So, I was beyond thrilled to, to make that call the next day and share that with him um, and and having his you know finger on the pulse point of what was going on was a was a big drive for us too because wow. he helped build it with his two hands and wasn't able to be here when it when it opened and so like we had that family um, uh, what's the word sweat equity sweat equity and um, I can't think of the word. Support, love, love. <laughs> they, they, they just wanted to know and, 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 and celebrate every, every penny that came through that cash register because they knew the work that went into it. That's that, that, and a little side note of the 90 days, everything you do see, we did build these by hand. That was something that we intended to do. We've gotten better at it. This is my best work over here. But the, we've, had, we've had dads and uncles and friends that have helped us, but we we felt it was, I want you to feel that when you stand on the counter, that it wasn't just brought and processed out of somewhere. Like, those are doors on their side. Everything is by intention. Like, it, it, I don't know. It's handmade from scratch. Definitely. I wanted, I wanted the, the, whole thing. the, the things in here to be handmade as well. So. Wow. That is a, does everybody feel the spirit of scrappiness, these two guys? Scrappiness. I'm like, can you just coach me? You know, seriously, you guys have a spirit of scrappiness that's unbelievable. That's true. So that's good stuff. And so hiccups in the 90 days. Give us one of your biggest hiccups, the thing that made you say, oh, MG, this is going to kill me. Do it. Can I? Go yes. ahead and do it. She said, all right. Oh, here it is. Oh, it's so it's our good. Best and worst so story. good. So you got to uh, tell it quick. I will. All right, I'll tell it really quick. Um, so. Within the first 90 days, I think it was like even 60 days in, we have this tiny little grease trap. And um, <laughs> grease traps fill up really quickly if you have butter and flour and sugar and things like that going into them. And we'd had some plumbing issues because we had to add every bit of plumbing to the Midtown store. There wasn't, a, wow. there wasn't, we weren't anywhere near plumbing. We had to add 
every bit of it up and down and out to the back of the, of the store. And um, so it, it malfunctioned a few times, did some overflowing, not real pretty. So my plumber came in to fix it, and he's like, and for a, for a courtesy to say, I'm so sorry that we've been working through these hiccups, I'm going to have your grease trap cleaned for you. It's this big, okay? <laughs> it's this big. I said, okay, well, that's cool. So they pull up a sewer truck. And it's one of the ones that has like a vacuum thing where they can go and hose out everything yeah. that you need hosed out from your entire apartment complex, probably. <laughs> Way overkill. So they're bringing this dirty hose into there and I'm not liking it. I don't feel good about this. They open up the little tiny aquarium box and instead of suck, they hit blow. <laughs> oh boy. And then when that wasn't good enough, is this thing still on? This is still on? I dropped yeah, it on the floor. OK. OK. Uh, so when that was, you know, like kind of like geysered up a little bit, and I'm like freaking out, he's like screaming at the other guy. He hits it again. Oh, boy. Like, there should be a full safe on that. Like, that shouldn't be possible. Shoots up, hits the ceiling, covers everything in the store. We're talking now hazmat. We have to, like, take everything out of the store have it thoroughly cleaned and cleared through OSHA. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> this was nuts. Wow. She came up from work, because uh, she hadn't, she was still working at Banana Republic that day. She came up from work, she saw us all going like, don't come in here, don't come in here, you're going to die, it's not gonna be good. <laughs> we had orders to fill. They went to the grocery store, her and two other people, went to the grocery store, bought all the ingredients, we called the people that we had orders for. They went to somebody's house. They cooked them at their house, delivered them to their homes so we could fulfill, fulfill all the commitments that we had. Wow. And then we were opened back up after like 24 hours of cleaning and cleansing <laughs> and, and everything else. That's some kick ass rock star stuff right yeah. there. I'm um, so you yeah, gave us the recovery. Clap <laughs> that up. Because I'd have been like, Jason, we're done. <laughs> Quit. Jason would be like, no, you're not. Oh yeah. my God, that's phenomenal. We can tell that now, it's five been... years later. Everything's right. all clean, you don't have any problems there. But uh, yeah, that was, that was quite that's a day. The you wanna throw in the things. towel after that day, like <laughs> every towel you have. What are we doing? Good stuff. Who else has questions? I assume when you started, you didn't have seven employees. So <laughs> can you talk a little bit about what it was like being the first employee and then transition from wow. Do you have children? Yes. Okay. Let me, let me repeat this question, make sure that we get this on tape. He's saying you didn't start off with these seven rock stars that you've got right now. You had to go through this period of time where you had to transition into the seven rock stars and let go some of your art. Some of the craftsmanship had to go in the hands yeah. of other people. Tell us about that. Is that what you're, yeah, you're it's, asking? It's hard. It's hard. It's, I, I did it. Um, main, I was the main person there for probably about a year and a half. We had like one person helping me. Uh, part time, and then as we started to have more, it was it's a, it's a constant battle. Like I'm kind of going through it right now myself because we're we're releasing more, and I'm kind of doing some of my own things, and it's a it's it's a it's a psyche. Like <laughs> I I have to I have to sometimes remind myself I'm not Lucy and Leo's, and that I'm still Jean, and I can do other things. But that is huge part of who I am. And releasing that, even on a small scale, is sometimes very difficult. So that's, the, that's one of the hardest things I think there is to do. And we, we have to obviously have a lot of trust with these people. Wow. And we trust um, that they will uphold this brand. Like in, in every staff meeting we have, the, the, the chunk of it is, you know, what are you doing to uphold our brand? Because this is, this is us. We are not Lucy and Leo, but we are Lucy and Leo. And what do you do to every customer that walks in that door that you uphold this brand in their eyes and, and let them know that, that this means what it means to you as well, not just to us? Wow, that's powerful. Does that answer your question? That was a great question, like releasing some of the art. That is really, really cool. Who else has questions? Here we go. Uh huh. <laughs> let me let me let me repeat that for it so we get that on tape as well. The volume, 
like what is the difference in volume between the food truck that you have, this location, the location that you have in Midtown? Mm -hmm. What's the and then difference? the various right. places mm -hmm. that we go? Absolutely. That is the hardest game to play. How many are you going to cook? For, because you don't you don't have a recovery period so the other the and and the food truck is the hardest one because we can't bounce back here this is one of the reasons why we have the baking actually at this location because it's more volatile and we can't guess how many we're going to have over here while it's still in its growth period maybe a year from now we'll be pretty dead on in like midtown I can tell you almost to the cake, to the cake what we're gonna sell and some other variables are in there with weather and, and timing with students, but we've gotten that one down to a science. The food truck, woo, that one is all over the place. The only thing that we can guarantee you is that we're going to sell more at Food Truck Thursday than all these places combined, almost two days worth in three hours. We put more cupcakes in there than you can almost fit in that little camper. We're talking like eight to 10 bins. And the bins are this big. Uh, we're talking huge volume for that food truck Thursday, um, wow. but it's it's a guesswork, you know. And and so and Waverly in itself, every time we've brought more and more and more and more because you guys love it so much. You, yeah, you guys wow. are probably the second most popular food truck event that we do. Wow, that is. Cool. But the other numbers we got to keep those quiet because then you'll know how much sales we do. Certain <laughs> <laughs> numbers. It is growing. Uh, it's, it's, it's slower than we may have expected, but it's giving it time to really get established. And we were, we were definitely nervous about this whole redirection of the, of the roads. Like we got a letter a month and a half ago about Gain Street closing and we're like, great, right? You're gonna it's close summer. it. They're gonna close it like the day after graduation is the day they started closing <laughs> it. And we're like, you're gonna kick us when we're down already. Like let people get here. But it actually turned out to be a blessing in disguise because they're detouring you in front of us. So we've got this fun little chalkboard back there that we put little funny like detour. Er, this is where you're supposed to park your car. This is, right here. This is where it's supposed to happen. Yeah, we got cold drinks. Are you tired of traffic? We're right here. Look up. You know, so we've had more people in the last two weeks now because of that detour. Brand new customers because yeah. they just drove down the road on a detour. We've used it a couple times, but we're a little close to ourselves there. So um, when we open, we sort of stop doing and that one. And the new one. area that we're talking about is? It's called the Food Truck Court. The Food Truck Court. It's it's sponsored by the city. Okay, so you guys have that location. And kind of explain that a little bit, because I don't think anybody heard that well, question. Well, the city started a Food Truck Court uh, about three blocks that way. Okay. Um, and okay. so it's it's got some picnic tables and 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 made four food trucks so they're trying to encourage that activity the city's very um, supportive of the food truck movement um, but the other one that's a main hub for us is called food truck Thursday and it's now at Lake Ella okay. and that has hundreds of people that come out there um, and then any other individual like she's speaking about Waverly their neighborhood hires us to come out food trucks to provide them for their their monthly kind of get togethers for their neighborhood cool. association you could just bring the food truck over to my house sure and park outside sure and i'll just go tell the neighbors let's get busy mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the food truck. so it's good stuff does anybody have any other questions yes sir um, i'd like to ask you about the expansion i mean obviously doing what you did in terms of your business you're not risk averse people <laughs> but in terms of, of, of your second location i mean midtown <laughs> we, we found out in going to a lot of events that the college students didn't know a lot about us. Um, we do, of course, have a, a core group that is a continued customer in Midtown. Um, but we were like, whoa, we have this untapped market of 18 to 25 that we're not really hitting yet. So where do you go? Right in their backyard. <laughs> wow. um, and, and all the growth that's happening in this area. Um, you know, we got in very ground level, you know, there's still a lot of vacant lots and things and you'll, you know, bulldozers go up and down the road every day. Um, but we're, we, we strongly believed that this was the right place because of 
um, in this community, the, the growth that's happening all around us. And we're kind of like sitting real pretty in the very middle of it, and it, it felt like the right place to go. And we'll be the more established business when the boom does happen, which I think will be, we'll be ready for it. And we also got in at a lot cheaper of yeah. rent than anywhere else in town. That will not be the case probably even next year. And all think. of this is referring to like, like you were saying, like the growth, that, that acceleration path, like what made you choose here versus anywhere else? And I'm just saying that's- They picked us here. too. These yeah. guys came to us, the, okay. the builders. They were trying to find a local anchor uh, to put in this area. They and they, they love our brand. They they yeah. they knew and loved our brand and, I and want a came to right us. Now. How many <laughs> y'all want t-shirts? T-shirt right with that logo. Uh, yeah, they and they wooed us. They came and bought a lot of cupcakes for a repeated like they they rented they rented the camper uh, to put outside for their other apartment complex. They had us do cross marketing with them, so they definitely did some. Uh, some wooing on us. Get busy. Boys. Yeah. That's awesome. Yes. Um, uh, this is something I've kind of been curious about for the last year or so. But, uh, <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you, and maybe you're not comfortable talking about it, but can you tell us a little bit about that Thomasville venture? Yeah. Co location, and like, what I'm really interested in is when you decided to quit. <laughs> so uh, he's. All quits. He's like, a. When did, you, when did you say that's not working out and this is how I just assembled it? Because that was just. There's a really easy answer. When it started to not feel right, um, there was nothing wrong with it. There was nothing wrong with it. It was um, growing in sales. It was growing in recognition. Um, that community in Thomasville is a very, very strong local community um, where sometimes they don't like the outsiders coming in, but they embraced us. They loved us. Um, but it just started to not feel we were in the right place. Um, and, we, and we say where our next stop might be, probably back in Thomasville, in our own place, in our own building, with our own mm -hmm. rules and regulations that, that are governed by us um, okay. to do it the way that we want to do it because it, it started to not feel that way and we, we didn't want to feel that way. And it wasn't bad. There was nothing bad about it. It just started to, when we had conversations about, man, this is getting a little yeah. bit difficult. <laughs> Some of the other challenges, did you want to repeat the question? Oh, no. Okay. I'm just saying, you guys oh. are like super gutsy. I mean, the things that you do, I'm sitting there, I'm like, you guys just go with your gut. Like, yeah. This ain't right, we're out bouncing. Well, the, the distance was hard, too. There was a little bit lost in translation because we did have to drive it up there. Um, and again like she's saying that's a key component is for us to be able to kind of bake on site and be there with it right. so when we lost that ability to kind of manage it ourselves um, and to drive it up there that's where we didn't feel good about having other people sort of be in control of it so we put it in other people's hands that didn't have the heart behind how we talk about it and sell it every day and th th that's not that's not for us and that was the biggest version of that kind of venture that we had done. And it was, a, I think, a stepping point for us to be able to do this one, to see if we could re, you know, build another store and do those things. So I think we did some practicing on ourselves in a way. Um, and we've done other things where we have sold them at wholesale to other places, but they just don't take care of them the way that we want them to be taken care of. And so we learned quickly that we want it, it feels good because we, we've had several, you know, there's hotels here in town that say, we've got this little grab-and-go section and we'd love to have your cupcakes. So we give it a shot and they, they don't take care of the product how we feel it needs to be taken care of. And so we're like, nope, that's not our brand. That is not how we roll. <laughs> and our brand is the experience that you have when you come into the shop. We came really close to nailing it there. Like, I do think that it looked like a, a, a smaller version of us. Uh, <laughs> it just didn't have the ability, the, the longevity to stay longer than we did, yeah. Cool. We might be back though. I was just up there today. <laughs> <laughs> and they miss us. Oh. Yeah, so the break-even point at, at Midtown, a more established store as opposed to the one that's growing. Um, 
it would be 250 cupcakes a day. That's an average. It's about that. <laughs> Easy just killer. Count, yeah, just, just count me <laughs> in. I'm gonna kill myself. Sugar overdose. Mm -hmm. Awesome cupcakes. I was just gonna just to speak to. Sure. Because, um, I don't have a super great question, but you know, I'm proud of you for being women. Um, <laughs> and and we're 40 it. too, so we're each. Well, wait, we gave our age away. So. Oh, you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <You're laughs> <right. laughs> wait, wait. wait, wait. You get it. You said you were 40. You I don't know about me being 40. Pretty damn good. Yeah. It's, there's a lot, of, a lot of power in it um, yeah. that we, we are lucky to be revered women in business in Tallahassee. And um, that, that pride that comes with that is immeasurable. Definitely. Yeah. And her question to repeat to make sure that we get that is, do you feel like there's a lot of female or women entrepreneurs here locally um, championing ideas and, and pushing things forward? What does the community feel like as it pertains to women entrepreneurship? I'd actually had a conversation with Jake about this in a bar. And I think that I was blind to the fact that there was something special about it. Like, I don't necessarily think that, <laughs> like, I just do it. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, the landscape, I didn't really think about it. I guess we're a cupcake shop, so maybe it makes more sense. I didn't start a contracting company or something like that, and I'm really having to fight that battle with a lot of men in the, in the world or the, or the landscape that we're in. Um, but we also have been very uh, active with the Midtown Merchants Association and that resurgence of that that happened in the Midtown area. And I would say 90% 90 of, of them are women. Wow. Yeah, so even in like the groups that we sort of like hang with, <laughs> there's a lot of women, you, you know, in those groups. So, yeah, I guess I didn't really notice, I suppose. If you didn't tell me, I wouldn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> He's like, you should be more proud of this. I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> You're more excited than I am. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad and I'm glad that that was brought up because as you notice, everybody hold them up. I want everybody to hold them up, get them on camera. Boom, 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 boom. You should have t-shirts and 40 forward um, journals and t-shirts and swag and hype. It's really, really awesome because a lot of times what happens is we celebrate the male entrepreneurs all the time. You always see them, interviews, on a, but you hardly ever see women representation and we really want to help bridge that gender gap that's there and show the rock stars that you are, the revolutionaries that are killing it. We're too busy real. working, man. That's, that's gonna be like the story of like, the reason, this is my, check. here's my hypothesis. <laughs> At the end of this, you're not getting them because they're working. They're doing the real deal stuff. But, but it's true, you guys, you bring something special to the table. You really, really do, and I want you to understand that, that you do bring something special. And we, I know I celebrate it, I appreciate it. All the guys in here, we appreciate it because, I mean, it's definitely an example to follow after the grustle, the hustle that you guys put into okay. it. So I want to go ahead and clap that up. <laughs> that is good stuff. Okay, it's refreshing. It's good stuff. Do we have any more questions in the building? It looks like everybody's like out of questions. Everything is good. Was this a good interview? Does everybody agree? <laughs> Did you learn something? Did you get some nuggets? I learned that you got to hustle. You got to get in it. Go with your gut, fight, do your thing, and make something that's meaningful and magic. And that's what these women have done. And please believe me, I'm coming back and suck your brain <laughs> as much as I possibly can because I'm Thank learning you. that you guys have a lot of valuable insight to deliver. So it's going to go beyond this. And I encourage everybody to do the exact same thing. If you can catch them and pull some knowledge from them, if you're trying to start your business, I would recommend it because this is what it's really all about, is that connection, that touch, and that real networking. It's good stuff. Well, I just want to thank everybody for coming to the Startup Grind. One more clap up for the, the people that we got up here, Lucy and Leo. I really do want my t-shirt. I'm not playing. I'm, I think they may be too small for you right now. I might need a reorder. Here we go. Out. Here we go. <laughs> absolutely. Welcome. But again, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I definitely want some. So thank you so much for this time. Thanks for having I've us. Been, yeah, I've thank been you. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. High five it. Let's go. This is, this is the start of the